All right, so I have a little treat for you today. Today's gonna be a little bit different. Um, it's Friday, it's a Friday. Today is June 26th, it's the day, Friday's the day that I record videos. And I actually just had a video go out and I'm gonna try to record several videos today. And I have a little sneak peek to what we're gonna be talking about today. Gear. If you're new here, my name is Jimmy Cooper and I have a passion for worship ministry and I love making videos on how to lead your teams well and resource them well, also how to shepherd and pastor your people. In this video, I'm gonna give you four reasons you should use a click in your worship ministry. Hey worship leader, welcome to another Quick Tip Tuesday. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about the topic of stage presence, but I also love making videos about gear and today, today, today's video is about gear, all about gear. I get questions all the time like, hey, what kind of guitar is that? Or what piece of gear is that? Or what, what pedal are you using there? And so today I figured I would walk you through my entire rig, all of it. Everything I use to lead worship, everything that's at least in this house. I still have everything in the house because of quarantine. And the only space I had was to put it all over my bed. So I hope that's not weird for you. And hopefully I'll have time to get some smooth, buttery B-roll of all this gear. So before we get into the gear, just a little side note, I've always been, um, drawn to filmmaking. Ever since I was a kid, I loved the idea of being able to record something. That light is flashing. I can't help it. It's just a cheap light. I'm gonna try to get some new lights too. You can see what I did here. <laughs> I thought the problem was that it was bad wiring and so I went ahead and fixed the wiring. I call that fixed, but it still flickers. I don't know why it flickers. Anyways, I've always been drawn to filmmaking. I remember the first time I saw the behind the scenes of the making of The Lion King, the first Lion King, the cartoon, and they demonstrated how they replicated the dolly zoom, and I just was like, when it was going in on Simba when his dad was dying. And I was like, no, that's crazy, tear. Um, but just the effect that they did to draw that emotion in there, I just remember being like, I gotta figure out how to do that. And so eventually I went and got my cheap Panasonic, well at the time it wasn't cheap, it was like 400 bucks and I was like, how old was I? 15, 16 years old. I saved up my money and I began to film everything. I practiced the dolly zoom, tried to get B-roll shots with that cheap camcorder. Um, I remember like tying my camera to a rope and trying to get a shot of going down some stairs real smoothly and it all looks really horrible. And that's why I'm so thankful that this YouTube channel allows me to pour into other worship leaders, to share what I know and what I'm passionate about with you all, but it also allows me to um, to hone in my skill of filmmaking, which I love. And so, so thank you for being here. Thank you for being a subscriber. Thank you for being with me on this journey and watching my videos. I really appreciate it. That's enough about that. Let's dive into the video. Uh, but real quick, before we dig into the gear, I know I've drawn it out too long. As I show you this gear, this is not stuff that you should have. You do not have to have all this gear to be a good worship leader. This is also not a video to brag about what I have. Uh, it's taken me years to accumulate some of this stuff. Uh, some of this I've received from the generosity of others. And some of this gear is not even mine. It's owned by the church where I lead worship. But this is, however, a video for you to have fun because if you're anything like me, I love seeing what other worship leaders use to lead worship. And hopefully it's a video to help spark some creativity, uh, to help you utilize the gear that you have, or to help you think through future purchases. All right, so I've divided this gear into three sections. First we have the acoustic gear, then we have the electric guitar gear, and then we have the pedal board. All right, so first up we have the acoustic guitar. This is a Taylor 414 CE. And the story of how I got this guitar is pretty cool. I was actually using this to lead worship at another church and when I was leaving to come to the church I'm at now, I asked if I could buy it because I didn't have a good guitar and they gave me a great deal on it and so I'm very thankful. If you're not familiar with model numbers, uh, 414 is I guess mid line. They go from the 100 all the way up to the 900. I'm not positive, don't quote me on that. but. Um, so four is kind of in the middle. Um, CE means, uh, the C means it has a cutout right here. And E means it's, it's an acoustic electric. Which is pretty cool. I love this guitar. It comes with the uh, Taylor case. And I keep things in the compartment here. 
Uh, these are the strings I use. I love these strings. These are the Elixir uh, NanoWeb coating. I've been using them for years. 12 to 53 light NanoWeb coating. I love these. I used to use the PolyWeb. I love the way they feel on my fingers, especially when I was getting, uh, when I was first getting into playing guitar and your, your fingers get really sore. Um, but that coating came off too easily. But this, uh, this holds up pretty good. Next, I always keep one of these with me. It's the uh, Super S Snark Tuner. Oh, by the way, I will link to all the products I mentioned today down in the description below so you can go check those out for prices and such. But this is the little Snark Tuner. You gotta have one of these. It's great. I also use a Jim Dunlop capo. This kind of style. I like it because it's low profile. My fingers don't hit it like it does on the other kind sometimes. But I'm not real picky with capos, especially on acoustic. Now this, I love this. Hold on a second. Oh, happening. Now this next thing I really love, it is the, uh, it's made by Dunlop. It's one of these and it hooks onto a guitar stand. Uh, in case I drop my picks, which let me just say, I love these picks because I don't drop them anymore. They're star picks and my thumb fat, here, let me set this up. These, my thumb fat fits in there like that. And then I never drop my picks anymore. But I say I never, sometimes you drop your pick, right? And so this thing hooks onto your mic stand. And then if you're strumming and you're leading and your pick drops, you can quickly grab another one and keep going. Definitely get one of these. So that's about it as far as what's in my guitar case. But I have one more thing that I use when I play acoustic and I'll show you that. This is the other thing I use right here. This is the Shure GLXD. No, G, what is it? GLXD16. Sure, GLXD16. And what this is, is it's a wireless guitar system. Plug this in like a, like a little mini pedal board. You can actually, I use it with my electric sometimes. You plug this in and put it on the ground, wherever you want. And then this here is a little receiver pack that goes on your guitar, plug it in, and they communicate with each other, and so then you can play wireless. I love being able to be wireless. This works really well. You can go really far and still keep a really good signal, and there's not a lot of latency in it. So definitely check this out. I will say you have to play with the channel and the groups to figure out, I think it was like group four, channel two, ended up working really well. I had it on another group, and if I walked more than three feet away, it stopped working, and I knew, because it has a bunch of really good reviews that that wasn't right. But once I found the right group and the right channel, it was really great. I've walked all the way around our worship center with no problem. I actually thought about making a video to test how far this would actually go before the signal broke. Maybe we'll do that in another video. This wireless pack also charges with a USB in the side, and I think if you charge it for like 15 minutes, you can get an hour and a half of play. So even if it's not fully charged, charge it for 15 minutes, uh, between rehearsal and playtime and you should have plenty to go for like a 90 minute set It's definitely worth the money if you have the money. It's just not cheap, but it's made really solid I love this piece of gear. All right, so that was my acoustic rig now on to the electric Next we have the electric guitar gear. This here is a gator case from gatorcase.com gatorcases.com my wife bought this for me years ago when I first bought my electric guitar I bought my electric guitar off um, Craigslist. Got a pretty good deal. Also, this is green tape with my last name on it so that people know that this is my guitar. All right, you ready? This is a, I have no idea the year, but it is a made in Mexico Telecaster, Fender Telecaster. Uh, like I said, I bought this on Craigslist like back in 2009. I didn't know much about guitars back then, but when I read the description, it said that it had a refinished neck and upgraded jumbo frets. I really love this guitar. This is the only guitar I've ever had. It's got vintage saddle, I think that's called. Cool story, I actually made this pick guard. It had a really cheap pick guard on it when I first got the guitar, it was all warped. So I bought a new one and it was white originally. And I actually have the white new pick guard that I ordered and I used it as a template to 
draw this out on some walnut. That's walnut. Many of you may not know that I used to be a carpenter for years. I mean, I, I still am a carpenter. I actually did some work for a friend of mine yesterday. Anyways, upgrades. I haven't done any. It came just like this, except one thing. My mom bought me these locking tuners, Fender locking tuners. And I love locking tuners because it makes it so much easier to tune the guitar and they look really nice. The problem is this is like a vintage guitar, I think, or made to look like a vintage guitar because it's it's got this older saddle, which I just showed you a second ago. And the holes didn't line up. These, these uh, locking tuners, the holes didn't line up as easily as I thought. So like I said, I'm a carpenter. I had my drill bits and I went ahead and just drilled new holes and got rid of the antique looking tuners, which may make you cringe and think, oh, you just ruined it. But you know what? This is my guitar and this is what I want. And I don't think I'll ever sell this guitar. I'm not worried about value. I'm worried about functionality, how it looks to me, how it plays. You can see it's got some, some wear and tear. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's got some dents, it's got a crack. I don't know how, if it looks white. It is pretty much white. It's like an Arctic white, like an off white. And you can kind of see the grain through the, the finish, which I really love. I bought this on Craigslist and it was literally like 330 bucks. Love this guitar. The strings I use are Ernie Ball Power Slinky, the purple pack. I really love these and they're cheap, they're like 4.99. Uh, I'm thinking about getting a different gauge to, to try it out, but I bought these in bulk like a long time ago and I haven't run out yet. But I always keep extra packs in my guitar case just in case you break a string while playing live. Another snark tuner. Always have those available just in case the tuner on my board doesn't work or whatever reason. Or as a worship leader, somebody's always like, oh, I don't have a tuner. I take one out, throw it to them. It's just good worship leader one-on-one. Have an extra tuner. Capo, regular, what is it, Kaiser? I think it's the brand. Just regular Capo. Whole thing fell off. Or I might have taken it off so that it wouldn't be so tight on the strings. It's been so long now, I don't remember. One little hack that I, I do with these is sometimes I'll take my wife's hair tie and tie it around here to stretch it out a little bit to relieve some of the tension. I know you can pay money for those tension capos, but you know what? I'm just making do with what I got. Okay, pedal board gear. This is the mono case. Now this case is a little expensive, but when I sold my other pedal board and I made my mini pedal board, which if you want to see the build of my mini HX Stomp pedal board, I built a mini pedal board around my HX Stomp. Uh, I'll link that video up here. But when I sold my other pedal board to build this project, I wanted to make sure that I had some good quality stuff that would last me a while because I don't plan to change anything for a while. So I invested in this mono bag. It says it's a flight case. This is the M80 Series Club 2.0, whatever that means. It has enough room to hold my pedal board here and any cables. It has a nice comfy shoulder strap. It has a secret compartment right here that I keep all my little tools and things I would need. Just extra patch cables and Velcro and zip ties. Also, look at this. They, they encourage you to just go play. How cool is that? Go play. It's got, a, it's got an airplane on it. So they're like, hey, you can go play anywhere in the world that you want to play. Just go play. It's also got these feet on the bottom that are just really cool to touch. Next up, I have the, the main unit. This is the HX Stomp mini board that I built a few months ago. I think it was like last November or something. You can go check that video out, like I said. Um, but this whole rig is based around the HX Stomp. I actually sold my Tyler HM18 amp uh, not that long ago because I just love this Stomp. The amp cap simulation is just fantastic, and I really wanted to keep my amp. I wanted to be an amp person, but I just couldn't justify keeping the amp because I never used it. I never carried it when I played other places. There was just one time last year that I used my amp, and it was a big youth event. And I have other amps, <clears throat> amps. I have other amps that I can get a hold of for those kind of events, and it wasn't worth me keeping my expensive amp when it was just sitting there. In my other video, I go pretty in depth of explaining what the board is, but let me just show you real quick. Let me go in order. First, we have the uh, Volume X Mini, which is a Dunlop or expression pedal. It's a low friction band drive, so it doesn't have a string like the old Ernie Ball uh, volume pedal that I used to have. I also have this Beko's FX Comp IQ Pro compressor. I haven't had a lot of compressors, but this one definitely does the job, and it's small, and it's black, and it matches my board, and I love it. From the compressor, I go into the HX Stomp over here, and then out of the, I don't know if you can see that, out of the send, I go into the Specular Reverb version three. 
Uh, I love this reverb. I, the one thing, which I said this in a video that just came out the other day, the one thing I was unsure of about going to the HX Stomp was, was, was I going to love the reverbs and the Stomp. Now, I will say, I do love the reverbs and the Stomp, but I went ahead and got a separate reverb machine um, because I can do eight presets with this and only take up one block of the stomp by using the effects loop. And what's cool about the stomp is the stereo. So I go stereo out of this back into the HX stomp. And this here is the Jet Micro MIDI controller. Um, it just plugs in MIDI right there. And I use that to control uh, different parameters on the stomp. Under the board I have the Chalk DC7 power supply. I love this power supply for several reasons. Uh, one, it's very low profile, so it fits right underneath this mono pedal board, which fits exactly neatly into the mono case that I bought. I ran into a problem when I was building board that the patch cables I thought were gonna work weren't. I just went down to Guitar Center and bought the Boss brand solderless patch cables, and they work really well. And then I zip tied everything together, so it's just a grab and go board. I mean, look at that, it's just, my other pedal board was so heavy. All right, so this is how it fits into the pedal board bag the case this is how I put everything in I slide the pedal board in right there I keep all my very uh, exposed patch cables towards the front because this is the bottom I'll close this and pick it up like this so it sits in there like that patch cable this is the USB cable that plugs it into the computer always keep that with me and you'll definitely want one of these to hear yourself uh, practice in your room so the cool thing about the stomp focus 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 the cool thing about the stomp is that you can practice at full volume in the quiet of your home. And so you'll want this to go into the headphone jack of the stomp and then this side accepts your in-ears. I always keep that with me too. Power supply cable. And one more thing I want to show you my in-ears. These are the KZ AS10s. I really love these. They're very balanced. I'm actually going to be doing a video soon on these in-ears and I have several others comparing them, uh, going over the prices, which ones you should get. Also, make sure you pay attention, you're getting the first announcement, if you made it this far in the video, that I'm going to be doing a giveaway and I'm pretty excited about it, so keep an eye out for that. All right, well that's about it. Thank you guys so much for sticking around, watching this video the whole way if you did. I know it was a little bit different. It was a little longer. If you did like it, please let me know in the comments below or you can also let me know by liking the video. As always, thank you for being a subscriber and if you're not, you can click that red button that says subscribe and then there's a bell next to it where you can edit your own notification settings for this channel. If you do that, you will be notified when I come out with a new video. Thank you so much for being with me on this journey. I will see you in the next video.